back now with our special guests, Jonathan McHugh and Nick Willard, to help set us straight on the fundamentals of sync licensing. Jonathan, every music supervisor I know is tremendously busy, uh, but I would imagine would love to discover that next incredible new sound. How can unknown artists best become discovered by you? Hmm. Uh, I think you just got to get yourself out there and put your music everywhere, you know, um, undis- finding un- uh, undiscovered talent is obviously something we all love to do. As we talked about earlier, if they're coming from trusted sources, um, uh, that obviously helps out. But, you know, it's there's no right answer here. You know, it's a needle in a haystack thing to find artists and get them synced up and things. Um, so it's really just about how can you connect with as many people as possible, get your music as heard by as many people as possible, and just continue to push out. I mean, the one thing I will say, if you're ever reaching out to music supervisors, you better make sure that you've done your research, that um, you know you know exactly what shows they're working on, you now know exactly what vibe of music is in those shows, because if you send something to a supervisor and you say, hey... Um, you know, I, I, I love, you know, here's my music. I think it would be great for this, but you haven't really listened to that or watched that show and know what that music is. And if you're off base and it looks like you didn't even do the research, your email won't even be read or read quickly and disposed of. So, you know, you really have to make sure that you know what you're doing. It's, it's a lot of time and energy to be able to find the right people doing the right shows and try to get to them. And and most of them won't respond because they're so ridiculously busy and they can't really engage with strangers. Um, So I think that idea of having that third party clearance or working for, with a team like song trader uh, will really be beneficial to you. Um, I think it comes down to the fundamentals of, of building an audience and building up credibility and relevance. I mean, if you take our situation at Song Trader, that there are jobs that we pitch for where potentially we're going up hundreds of other tracks will be going in for the same brief. Um, so one of the things that our team are doing is is trying to give more context to that piece of music beyond just an audio file, uh, which the supervisor may may or may not listen to or may or may not like. Um, so I think that, that that idea about having an audience, having relevance, having kind of... Um, points of interest that you can refer to either whether that's as an artist or the people that are pitching that artist feels like it's really important. Mm. And Jonathan, you mentioned that artists should be very prepared before reaching out. What should artists never do as well when communicating with you or a music supervisor? Mm, Like I said, take presumptions that they know better and they, you know, here's a song I wrote about fire and it should be played on Chicago fire. Like those kind of things are just dumb. And people think that they're smart because it sounds smart, but it doesn't. Um, so a lot of it is just about understanding who you're dealing with. It's very hard to know what people are working on. So it's very hard to hit that nail on the head. But if you see a certain show and you see that it's all hip hop, then don't send them, you know, rock music or vice versa. You know, you kind of have to understand the research. And, you know, every time you see a show buried in the credits somewhere is the music supervisor at the end, super quick. So you got to freeze frame that because it goes pretty quick. Or you go to this uh, a platform called IMDB, which is uh, stands for Internet Movie Database. And that has uh, most of the credits of what people are working on. People pretty much religiously update their credits to keep up on stuff. So that's, those are two good tools to just literally watch the shows, watch the movies and figure out, it's very hard to figure out what music supervisors like, because we like what we have to like. We like what is up for that show. You know, so I'm doing one show that's predominantly Bay area hip hop right now called blind spotting, but yet I'm doing another animated comedy that is everything from sixties music to modern day hip hop. Um, So you just never know what people are working on and you have to really try to pigeonhole as much as you can figure out how your music might actually work with uh, the projects they're working on. Would you say, though, that um, music supervisors get known for a specific aesthetic or a, a taste or a style? Yeah, I mean, there's certain supervisors like... 
let's call it Matt Sullivan and Steve Gazicki that are doing all the biggest musicals out there. You know, they're spending a year, two years on a project on one film. Um, and those guys have become like the musical go-to guys. Uh, and so that's that. And then you get, you know, supervisors that, you know, do one show and then they get another show and that feels like that. And then they become, you know, like Jen Malone did Atlanta and then she did, um, uh, what's a show with Zendaya? Um, anyway. I really want to help. Oh, um, I can see it. Yeah, that one. Anyway, yeah. so but the point is, <laughs> but she does so much more than that. You know what I mean? It just, it, you know, you get in one lane and then you get hit with a couple different things. So everybody's like, oh, get me the person that does Atlanta. You know, I want to do that show. I want to do a show like, I got a show like that. Um, so it's all relative and there's, you know, a lot of us are very versatile, whether it's films, documentaries, TV, you know, advertising, video games, you know, the skill is the skill. And it's really just applicable in all those different formats and areas. 